In today's video, we're going to talk about the UART, how to find it and access it on embedded devices. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. In my last video, we gained control of an embedded device using the UART and some hardware trickery. Today, we're going to take a step back and look closer at the UART and how to access it. In order to access a device over UART, you'll need a serial adapter such as an FTDI. I'll drop a link below to the ones that I buy. Now, there are a couple of things that you should know when working with the UART. First off, most of them will be presented as four pin connections. You've got power, ground, receive, and transmit. One rule of thumb here though, don't hook up that power pin. It is never required for communication and can cause a number of problems. Second, UARTs are almost always 3.3 volts, but sometimes you'll see five volts. Your adapter likely has a jumper on it to select between the two voltages. Make sure you've got that set properly. The UART is usually provided directly by the processor and is unprotected. So if you mix up the voltage, you'll probably let the smoke out and end up with a paperweight. This has burned a lot of Raspberry Pi users. Finally, for an embedded Linux at least, these are almost always going to be 115,200 BPS, 8-bit, no parity, one-stop bit. And make sure you have flow control turned off in your terminal software. If you're using Linux, which obviously you should be, Minicom is a great and user-friendly package for serial communication. So let's check out a couple of boards and find the UARTs. Often, they'll actually be labeled, and they'll have standard spacing through-hole connections you can use, but not always. If you do run into these, it's super convenient to solder in a set of pin headers. If not, you'll want to solder wire directly to the pads, but don't try soldering on a pin because you're just asking for that pad to get ripped off the board. First up, we've got a network video recorder board. This is in my video backlog, but it was given to me with the three required header pins already attached. You can see it's a nice through hole and there's a label just above it showing the pin out. It doesn't get much easier than this. Next, here's one of the hackable webcams I've featured in other videos. Again, this one is labeled, but the connection is just a little pad. You can solder your wires to them, but I recommend you reinforce it a bit to try and prevent them from being pulled off. A little hot glue can do the job, Next up, here's that zoom go from the last video. On this one, the transmit and receive pads were next to each other on one side of the board, but he had to get ground from elsewhere. This isn't typical. Engineers are usually lazy enough that they'll be grouped together and easy. Now, when you run into a device where it isn't labeled, we can still usually figure it out. Generally, the pins are grouped together, and generally there will be four of them. We can use our multimeter to figure out which pins are which. Now the first thing you want to do is identify your power and ground. If your device has USB port, the outer shell will be grounded, so we can probe the other pins looking for voltage. You should find a pad with 0 volts, and the rest will probably read 3.3. Now go ahead and switch your multimeter to the ohm setting. We're going to validate that the pin without voltage is actually tied to the ground. You should have zero or very near zero ohms. If your pins are grouped together, the typical arrangement would be a ground on one end and power at the other, with the two inner pins being RX and TX. Let's go ahead and measure that pin that we expect to be power. And there you see we've got 3.3 volts, just as we would expect. We can find the TX pin pretty easily, as communication is done by altering the voltage and we can see it with our meter. Go ahead and set up your negative probe on ground, either on the pin or using the housing of a connector. Then connect the positive probe to one of the potential pins and plug in the power line. If you see the voltage hold steady and not move, that's probably the RX. But you see how the voltage is jumping around? That's data. Now again, if the pins are grouped together, it's pretty safe to assume that the power pin's on the end, but ultimately, as long as it matches your configured voltage, it won't matter if you get it wrong. So let's go ahead and connect these up to our serial adapter, and we'll see what we can see. It may not be obvious, but the RX and TX ports on the device need to cross to the TX and RX on the serial adapter. The device transmitting is received by the adapter, and vice versa. So let's connect to ground, RX, TX, and check out our terminal software. Going to 
So here we are in Minicom, and we're already set up for the common parameters. 115, 200, 8 and 1, and no flow control enabled. Let's plug in the power on this board and enjoy the boot up. Boom, we have boot up messages and I'm able to interrupt the bootloader. All right guys, that's about it for this one. With a little practice, you'll be figuring out these UARTs effortlessly and can move on to the next step in your embedded or hardware hacking project. Hey, if this video helped you out, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you're interested in embedded Linux and hardware hacking, Come check us out over at the Hackers Homestead Discord. I'll put a link down in the description. Throw your questions and comments down below, and I'll do my best to get to them all. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.